What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today I'm taking a look finally at Pingai OS 13.10, the beta 3, or in other words, the final version for this release cycle. <laughs> So Pingai OS is one of those distributions that is aimed at the new user, or at least a user that wants a complete out of the box experience with minimal fuss of installing all of the apps and software that are good in the Linux world. And to that effect, the Pingai OS team, well, Pingai really being one person, does a pretty good job of doing this as far as bundling in a great set of applications and tweaks and tools that make it very easy to get up and running with Pingai OS in very minimal time. Now the layout of Pingai OS really hasn't changed too much uh, over the years considering the massive transition that the Linux desktop has been through, especially on the GNOME side of things. Now back with my last review of Pingai OS, this was all the way back in the 11.04 cycle. So this is a long time ago and obviously the Linux desktop has changed a lot since then. Can't believe it's been that long since I looked at this distribution, but really I have actually looked at all of the different iterations of this distribution as it has evolved just never got round to reviewing it. So here we are looking at the 13.10 release cycle and like I said it is a it is a third beta but in other words it's pretty much final. Now the way it works is that the long-term support releases that come out for Ubuntu they're the ones that Pingai pulls aside and wants to make as stable as possible. Now there are so many tweaks and there's so many enhancements going on in this distribution that it's very hard to get perfectly stable especially considering that well the team it really consists of him and maybe a few other people that help him test it. You can definitely see a great community input into this distribution because of all of the GNOME tweaks that are done to GNOME and the desktop environment as a whole. Now in case you are wondering, it is running a backport of GNOME 3.10 in Ubuntu 13.10 base. Now this essentially means that you have a more up-to-date version of GNOME than what you do in the official GNOME remix of Ubuntu. So that means that you've got a more up-to-date version of GNOME, you've got a few more little tweaks and tricks going on here up here in the toolbar, but really most of the changes that of GNOME 3.10 you can have a look in the GNOME 3.10 release notes. I'll post a link down below just in case you're interested. But Pingai gives a very customized desktop experience in that you've got a menu here that is pretty unique. Most of these come from GNOME shell extensions from the GNOME community. But also, like I said, they're pre-packaged here in a distribution ready to go, so you don't have to hunt them down yourself. I think it makes more sense to the traditional user than something like the GNOME shell activities, but GNOME shell activities is there if you so desire. Now I think this view makes a bit more sense when it comes to having a look at the apps that are pre-installed. Now like I already mentioned, Pingai aims to provide an out of the box experience for his operating systems and so a lot of the apps here that are pre-installed are aimed to achieve that purpose. Whether it be multimedia, just general fiddling around, web browsing, pretty much anything that you want your computer to do, there's probably an app to do it here out of the box, which is pretty impressive. So we've got things like transcoding, we've got keeping your system clean with apps such as Bleachbit, tweaking a computer like boot repair and boot up manager. We've got Wine pre-installed here as well. That's basically a transitional layer to help you run Windows programs inside a Linux based operating system. You've got ebook management, webcam stuff with cheese here. We've got Clementine, which is a music player. Now, one thing that I will mention is that while all of these apps are here, to be honest, a lot of the weird names that we see in open source communities like uh, DVD or Clementine or stuff like that, new users aren't really going to know what these apps do unless they open them up. No big deal really, but when it comes to discovering applications, and especially if you're a new user, seeing what these applications do and titling them as such will uh, will help them to discover what these, what these apps are capable of, as opposed to just having a whole bunch of random names in here and just kind of having to figure it out for yourself. Now, the new file manager that is in Ping iOS is not uh, the default GNOME Nautilus file manager. They opted to use the Nemo file manager from Linux Mint because it does seem to have more features than Nautilus nowadays. So I think it was a good move as it gives users that are more used to a traditional desktop paradigm a nice fully featured file manager. We've got LibreOffice here as well, we've got BitTorrent clients, we've got Mumble here for all of your chat room stuff. We've also got the MDM setup. Now basically the MDM setup is just a tool to help you customize the login screen of your Linux distro so you can make it look however you want which is pretty sweet. And as we go down the page here, there's a little bit of repetition here as far as onboard, onboard settings, online accounts, three different types of it. Especially when you look at all the pre-installed apps in this view, it can be a little bit confusing. 
It's worth mentioning though that a lot of these applications and a lot of these settings available in GNOME 3.10 settings are actually pretty well put together. GNOME has matured quite a bit as far as customization abilities inside the GNOME Shell experience. And the all settings panel here really does that justice as far as seeing what options are available to you and being able to customize nearly any element of your system. And then also taking care of those maintenance things such as privacy or backing up or creating new user accounts, etc. We've got a bit of a search field here as well. So if you are looking for something in particular, you can find it. And it also is wor worth mentioning that in GNOME 3.10 and thus Ping iOS, you do have a more global search now. So you can see here when I start to type terminal, I'll get results not only with applications, but also settings and maybe files if I have opened any files recently with the term uh, terminal in them. Now, as you may have noticed, the wallpaper has changed and they have a little utility sitting up here in the system tray that helps to rotate those wallpapers from a number of different online sources. Also running along the top, we have workspace management, the update manager from Linux Mint, and we also have the Synapse keyboard launcher. Now I'm a big fan of keyboard launchers, as many of you know, and to see it included by default is a great boon for productivity. Because personally, while these solutions do exist, like the overview here, and you've also then got the menu up here in the top left, there's still nothing that beats a keyboard launcher when it comes to launch speed of certain applications. So it's a great choice, a great inclusion, and especially when you've been using this system for a while, this, uh, this keyboard launcher synapse can really help speed things up. As we continue to have a look at the pre-installed applications here, you can really see there are a lot here. You've got game managers, you've got lots of tools and utilities to help you manage your system, you've got your full office suite, you've got a video editor, you've got a photo editor, you've got Play on Linux to get all of your Windows software up and running with a wizard, which is pretty nice. You've got other apps that are quite difficult to install, like the PS3 media server and remaster system. That's basically if you want to create your own operating system or your own snapshot of the operating system, then that is the tool to help you out. So you can reinstall it with all of your own personal settings ready to go. They got some screenshot utilities. We've got Skype pre-installed. We've got Spotify pre-installed and Steam. This operating system really is fleshed out to the max. Now it is a fairly sizable download coming in at under three gigs, I believe but it really does include a lot of the software that you would expect to install shortly after installing a brand new uh, installation of Ubuntu, say. You can see here, this is, the, this is the preferences for the wallpaper rotation software. And you can see here where all the different wallpapers are coming from, and you can add sources or delete sources as you so desire. Now there's no bones about it, the Ping iOS is a pretty loaded down distribution. So you're going to want to have a fairly up-to-date computer to be able to run this bad boy. You're going to want to have plenty, plenty of resources to throw at it. Now the LTS version, or the Ping iOS based on Ubuntu 12.04, is still available to install and download, as it is going to be supported for quite some time. And it is easier on the resources than the more up-to-date versions, such as 13.10. So if you do value stability, but you still want a complete out of the box experience, then definitely go and check out the 1204 version of Ping iOS. It's available from the website. I'll throw in a link in the description. But if you like up to date software and you would like to play around with GNOME 3.10, then definitely give the Ping iOS 13.10 beta 3 a look. You can see here it's using about 600 meg of RAM, which isn't too bad. And it's chugging away here at, this, at the two CPUs that I've given it. So it is a fairly busy operating system. It's got quite a lot going on. And it's also worth mentioning that Firefox has quite a number of tweaks and tools installed by default as well. So you can see if we have a look here in add-ons, you can see when we go into the extensions, we've got quite a few here enabled by default. A lot of helpful ones here, a lot of ones that I use myself. So again, it really just focuses on taking the work out of setting up an operating system, just being able to install this one, jump right in and get done what you need to get done. Again, a lot of plugins here available to handle nearly any type of web browsing that you throw at it. At the end of the day, what is the target audience for Ping iOS? Well, I believe it's anybody that wants an out of the box operating system, be they new users or advanced users, power users, because it really has the potential to be whatever you want to turn it into. Now, this distribution will not appeal to those who have their own way of working, who have their own set of applications and tools that they like to use and prefer to use on a daily basis, as this distribution is very well set up as it is. Now, there was a solution to this kind of problem that Pingai put out, and that was the Mini-Me version. It was essentially Pingai OS without all of the apps installed, so you could get all the tweaks and all the tools, but without any of the apps, you could choose your own. 
but I'm not sure if that's only available for the LTS release. So definitely check that out on his website and check out the forums as well because that's where a lot of the information comes out for the Ping iOS releases. So if you're interested in a fully loaded distribution with a great set of applications, tweaks and tools, then definitely check out Ping iOS. It was one of my first distributions that I really started to enjoy back in the Ubuntu 10.04 cycle and it gave me a lot of great ideas and a lot of great inspiration as to what tools and tweaks you could do with your system. Will I personally use it? Well, probably not because I have because I've been using Linux for quite some time now. I do like to have my own I do have my own workflow and I have my own apps and things that I'm used to. But if you'd like to get to know more of the Linux ecosystem and some of the fantastic apps that are out there, then Pingai has done a lot of the hard legs for you and packaged a very nice operating system that's ready to go in a relatively stable package. And once again, if you're looking for absolute stability, then definitely check out the 1204 release. That'll be all from me. I shall see you all in the very near future with a Fedora 20 review. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy New Year. And I will see you all in the very near future. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all of that fantastic stuff that you guys have already been doing. And let me know in the comments below what you think I should look at when it comes to the desktop environment of Fedora 20. Because they're all relatively vanilla, but it'll be interesting to see which one comes out of the mix. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you later.